The navigation display is normally located on the inboard display units. The ND presents a selectable color display of flight progress. ND heading is supplied by the Aderu. Air data is supplied from whatever source is being used by the associated PFD. Four primary display modes are available. Approach mode shows ILS approach information on an expanded compass rose. VOR mode uses a similar format for VOR data. Map mode presents FMC information against a moving map background and is the recommended mode for most phases of flight. Approach, VOR, and Map can also display in a centered format. Centered modes show a full compass rose. Plan mode displays non-moving map information, but is always oriented to true north. Map and plan are covered in a separate lesson. These controls are used with the ND. The mode selector is used to set the desired display mode. Since this lesson is not about plan mode, select VOR. Let's first look at the ND heading track indications. VOR and approach are both heading up displays. Current heading is shown in the window. Heading reference shows the orientation of the compass rows. This is covered in detail in the second ND lesson. The top of the airplane symbol represents airplane present position. The track line indicates airplane track, the same as the PFD. The ND and PFD use the same MCP controls to set the heading and track bugs. Display and movement of the ND bugs is synchronized with the PFD bugs. Set the heading to 054. Unlike the PFD, ND bugs do not park when set to values beyond the displayed compass rows. Also notice that a readout of the MCP setting and mode are not shown on the ND. Before we go through navigation radio tuning, let's look at the radio information that is displayed on the ND. The source of the displayed navigation information is shown here. The left ND displays left VOR data only, and the right ND, right VOR data. The left ND normally displays left ILS information, but should that source fail, it will automatically use center and then right ILS data. The right ND follows the same logic, but in reverse order. After a valid identifier is received, the ident replaces the frequency. All NAVAID frequencies are tuned using the navigation radio page, which we'll talk about in a moment. Selected course is shown here. The course pointer positions to the selected course. DME, if available, is shown here. Course deviation is displayed on this scale. The glide slope scale displays only in approach. In VOR mode, the course deviation indication remains unfilled at all times. In approach, the indication and glide slope pointer fill when deviation is slightly more than two dots. Unlike the PFD, an expanded localizer scale does not appear on the ND. ILS deviation alerts are identical to the PFD displays and are triggered by the same conditions. The to from indication only appears in VOR mode. The VOR ADF switches display left and right VOR or ADF point. The off position removes the respective information from the display. Move the left switch to the VOR position and the right to ADF. V 
VOR pointers and tuning information are shown in green. ADF pointers and information are cyan. Left VOR ADF pointers are a single line. Right pointers are a wider double line. Both VOR and ADF frequencies are replaced by idents once valid identifiers are received. Next, let's look at how the nav radios are tuned. ILS tuning was covered in the last PFD lesson. The navigation radio page also allows two different VOR or ADF frequencies to be tuned. VOR frequency, tuning status, and identifier are displayed. The tuning status A indicates automatic tuning which is the normal FMC operating mode. R displays if a VOR is tuned because it is part of the active route. P indicates the nav aid is a required part of the selected approach or departure procedure. Manual tuning is shown by an M. Manual entries are accepted at any time regardless of the current tuning status. Valid entries are frequency or identifier alone, frequency and course, or identifier and course. Now, let's see what happens when you enter a frequency of 110.9 for the left VOR. The invalid entry message occurred because you tried to enter an ILS frequency. Frequencies from 108.1 .1 to 111.95 with odd tenths digits are not allowed. A VOR can be returned to auto-tuning by deleting the current frequency. Use the delete key to delete the left VOR frequency. Now enter 115.0 with course 324 for the left VOR. Notice that the course automatically displays below the frequency. Course is blank if the VOR is auto-tuned. Selected courses are automatically sent to the ND. CDU radial data corresponds to bearing pointer position on the ND. ADF information is limited to the ND bearing pointers. ADF auto-tuning is not available. Dashes are displayed until a frequency is entered. ADF frequencies may be entered in any of these formats. ADF tuning mode is shown here. Blank indicates ADF mode and is the system default. ANT indicates antenna mode. BFO is beat frequency oscillator mode. You can change tuning mode by entering a frequency and the first letter of the mode or by entering just the letter if a frequency is already tuned. Tune the right ADF to 1470 using antenna mode. Touch the highlighted key. Touch the highlighted key. The mode used should be appropriate to the navigational situation or audio requirements. Additional tuning data can be stored for later use on the pre-select line. Any valid format for any line on the page is accepted. 
Use the right pre-select data to retune the ILS receivers. Now let's look at a few miscellaneous ND indications. Ground speed is shown here. During taxi, the numbers are larger and easier to read. At 30 knots, the size is automatically reduced. Above 100 knots, true airspeed is displayed. Wind information also displays above 100 knots if wind speed is greater than 5 knots. Wind direction is displayed as a readout and a wind arrow oriented to the compass rows. Weather radar and TCAS data can also be displayed. The traffic switch toggles TCAS traffic symbols on and off the ND. Push the traffic switch to remove the TCAS data. The weather radar map switch toggles radar information on and off. Both TCAS and weather radar are discussed in other lessons. Notice that range information is now displayed. Range is shown in expanded VOR and approach only when weather radar or TCAS traffic is on. The number equals one half the actual range setting. The range selector controls the displayed range. Set range to 160 miles for a quick weather check. The remaining map switches are covered in the next ND lesson. Before discussing non-normals, let's look at how center displays differ from expanded displays. The center switch toggles the ND between expanded and centered modes. Approach, VOR, and map can all be displayed in centered mode. The center switch is inoperative when plan is selected. Now push the center switch. The centered format remains in effect when changing from mode to mode. To see this, select approach mode. Now let's compare both approach mode and D's. The most obvious difference between expanded and centered modes is the compass rows. Notice the airplane symbol has changed. Present position is now at the center of the symbol. The selected heading line is not shown on a centered display, but the selected heading bug is always in view. The selected course pointer is a different shape, and the glide slope scale is positioned higher on the display. Course deviation indications and deviation alerting are identical in both modes. In VOR, the to from word is accompanied by a conventional triangle symbol in centered mode. Finally, centered VOR and approach do not indicate range because weather returns and TCAS symbology cannot be shown on the centered format of these modes. Now let's look at a few non-normal conditions which affect only these ND modes. The single source ILS caution message displays if two of three ILS receivers fail. This message was also covered in the last PFD lesson. Both NDs now show ILS data from the same source. Unlike the PFD, however, the actual ILS data source is clearly displayed on the ND. Cancel the message. Navigation radio tuning problems are alerted with the ICAS advisory FMC message and a CDU scratch pad message. In this example, the NAV invalid tune MWH message indicates that the selected approach procedure requires the MWH VOR and that neither VOR is currently tuned to the correct frequency. Delete the left VOR frequency to allow VOR auto tuning. The scratch pad is incorrect. The scratch pad is incorrect.
If a data source fails, a box flag is displayed. An ICAST message may display if multiple failures have occurred. Expanded VOR and centered approach failure flags are shown here. This completes the instruction portion of the lesson.